In this week's show, we find out what Lenin has to do with modern aircraft, why wearing colour specs could be good for you, and Jatropha. Sounds good, doesn't it? But first, disaster has been averted, and the South African authorities have seen sense. The plan in the finalisation of the Protected Areas Amendment Bill 2008 oh, was for light aircraft to be restricted to narrow corridors across the national parks of Africa. In other words, air safaris would be over. But luckily, just about everyone involved in flying there opposed the idea, including the government. The South African CAA were overruled. There are some great self-fly holidays down there, and if you're going, send us some video or do an interview with the place you hire from. Four billion dollars and 102 aircraft. That was the tally for China's biennial air show. Airbus alone sold 20 A320s for a cool 1.1 billion US dollars. But this is the bit that might interest you a bit more. Have you ever considered flying a Chinese-made jet? No? Well, General Electric are getting five and have an option to buy 20 more. We're wondering if they come with Kung Pao prawns and black bean sauce. That would be good. Are you planning a world trip this year in a commercial airliner? Well, two American ladies want to beat you around the globe in a single-engine aircraft. Their weapon of choice is a Mooney and they'll set off from Florida on the 3rd of December. The bad news is you don't just set off and enjoy the view. Instead, the clock is running constantly and just like a car race, the time you spend in pit stops, or as pilots normally call them 50-hour checks, count. The good news is the record they need to beat was set by Beechcraft Bonanza in May 1988 with an average speed of 54.6 miles per hour. No, seriously, that was it. I'm sure they'll do it. If you're watching us at Harvard University, then hello. Sorry none of us were brainy enough to join you there, but it's great to know that you are watching. Also, we know we have some students watching at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and at Cambridge, Cranfield, and Kingston Universities in England. Now, you might think I'm rattling these names off to make us sound like the greatest aviation show on Earth. No, it's because you guys and girls are going to be developing the future of technology for aviation. We all know there are plenty of groups out there who want to ban all forms of fun, and we say have fun and save the planet. That's why you guys are so important, working on alternative fuels, electric power, fuel cell technology, and probably also warp drive. It's amazing, though, that there are so few people like you. The aviation technology industry is crying out for new blood, and the jobs are there, so much so that employers are now taking direct action. You know we're involved in Aero Expo next year, right? Well, this year there will be a careers centre, and because the organisers know you'd rather spend your money on beer, not tickets, entry is free with a student card. Talking of Aero Expo, Rick isn't here this week because he's on the other side of Europe. And we're going to try something very new in just a moment. But first, here's his report. Welcome to Prague in the Czech Republic. We're here to look ahead to this year's Aero Expo Europe event. Now, comrade, I know you've got the idea of men with long pointy beards and farmers proudly carrying potatoes through the streets, but times have changed. It's very easy to think of Eastern Europe as being behind the times, as being a bit in the past. But in fact, Prague was one of the places that really did lead the rejuvenation of this part of the world, as you can see from this shopping street in front of me. It really is now a thriving economy. This part of the world has always been great at making aircraft. In fact, if you've been heading this way in a B-52 during the Cold War, one of the planes made here would have been trying to, well, cut your journey short. The great thing is the skills still remain, but they're now being used to deliver the benefits of aviation to everyone. So they'll be rather different from fighter jets. And they're gonna be rather different vehicles from the ones like this, LSAs, Group A aircraft, turboprops, and even helicopters. You'll even get entry-level private jets or VLJs, Pilatus, Aquila, Cirrus, Diamond, Gibson and Liberty will all be here and we'll be grilling all of them to find out what they're doing for you. The event in Prague takes place in May. These statues may have been here for more than 300 years, but general aviation is obviously a lot newer than that, but it's thriving here. So will people go to a show in Eastern Europe? Mm -hmm. 
Not so. I mean, Eastern Europe is expanding massively from the point of view of aviation. Last year, Aero Expo Europe had their first event just outside this city, outside of Prague, and it was massively successful. So they're coming here again this year. And we're also, of course, going to be covering a lot of the event this year. But they've got manufacturers right across the Czech Republic, indeed, in other parts of Eastern Europe as well, that are doing really, really well. For example, like in the LSA classes. So yes, it's, it's a big area for GA expansion in particular. And what's that bridge behind you? Oh, a bit of history for you, okay. It's the Charles Bridge. You've probably seen it in all the movies. Um, what is it? I think it was built in something like the 1700s. And it's famous for having 30 statues on top of it, representing various saints and things like that. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful city, I tell you that. So Rick, how are you coming to us like this? Ah, right, modern technology. This is a full flat.tv innovation, a little bit anyway. Um, let me show you, actually. I'm just going to pick up this webcam here, which I don't know whether you'll be able to see, but um, you can see I've also got a laptop down here, and very kindly the hotel behind us, which you might just be able to see there, has um, a wireless network, which we're being allowed to use for this broadcast, back to the studios for you now. And we can do more interviews like this with you wherever you are in the world, so if you've got a story, get in touch. The email address is on the screen. What's your reaction to the world Jatropha? Happy to fill up your aircraft with 90 litres of it? Well, if a Boeing Air New Zealand trial is a success, it could be the biofuel of the future. A 747 will leave Auckland on the 3rd of December with a 50-50 mix of jet fuel and the oil from the Jatropha tree, which grows in Africa. Now, it might sound a bit chicken, but they're only going to use it in one of the four engines. But then if you were the test pilot on a flight like this, you'd probably do the same. Remember last week, Rick discovered, much to his annoyance, that he really is colourblind when he took the tests. Well, while he was at Aviation Optical and Medical, he tried out some of those coloured lenses too. We kept the camera running. If you can just climb into there. And so the usual, the, seat, the, seat. the usual seat? The usual seat. Do we get to crash this? <laughs> what we need to make sure when you're flying is obviously that you can see into the distance nice and clearly. Okay. But you should also be able to focus on things up close as well. Right. right? Yep. So we would just check that you can see all these dials and digits. Yep. And as you get older, they find that they can't either focus here and they mm. can't see this, which is dangerous. Or they've got distance glasses, but they, can, they can't focus with those on the near vision mm. class. So they then have to change glasses to very focals or yep. bifocals. And different, like different lenses. Yep. Particularly when you've got a cameraman out there. <laughs> well, okay. So just keep that on your lap and then you can just hold each one up and try the different scenes with each filter and see which one gives you the best contrast. Gotcha. Oh, that's bad without them, though. You, you can see a little bit with those, but... Yellows are actually amazing. It's lovely. You still get the best benefit from it, but without cutting out the light. So, so the only thing, really, where you've got anything which is kind of yes or no is obviously being able to see anyway, yeah. and the colour blindness yeah. is so a clear... You've got your visual standards. You've got to be able to have a minimum vision that's required yeah or better obviously and then obviously color vision is the if, main one you know if you if you've got people who are going look i can't see that well how much of that can be solved through glasses and things like that depends what the problem is I and mean, if they've got cataracts or things like that then you're not going to be able to solve that yeah right that's but an if operation are healthy they've got clear medias no cataracts no opacities no retinal detachment nothing mm. serious going on inside the eyes which is what the other checks are doing mm. then there shouldn't be any reason why we can't correct your sight. By the way, looking at the poll, we said colourblind people should be allowed to fly at night. Do you agree or disagree? And you said... Yet another website has embedded our show. Thanks to Hans from Air Van Netherlands, we've been having a great chat with him about the flying scene there and we want to do some stuff with you guys next year. Have a look at his site where you'll find fullflap.tv every week. That's it for now. I'm Vicky Ferrer and this is fullflap.tv Connect.